uh, I, I believe my depression started, uh, my mom tells me around 18 uh, of years of age. And, um, and I, I, I figured that out because uh, she told me, I, I, I would have never remembered this, but she had said, uh, I, I asked her one day, uh, as a young man, I'm 51 now, and I asked her, Mom, why did you let me leave high school and freshman year? And she said, Ray, don't you remember? You, you threatened to kill yourself if I didn't take you out of school. And looking back, I, I only had uh, so much, so little time in high school, but uh, I don't recall that whatsoever. But knowing as I developed in life that that must have been so, and, and you know, my mom has no reason to lie to me. But, um, um, and the, 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 the music I w was doing, this is a subgenre of heavy metal. There's multiple subgenres of heavy metal. Heavy metal would be like the, the top of the, the, the iceberg, but if you go lower, then there's you know death metal, black metal, thrash metal, uh, just goes on new metal, old metal, and um, and we were we were in a form of black metal that's considered suicide suicidally depressive black metal. So the music is there to um, we draw from our own depression when we're composing this music. We draw from our own hate if we're if we're full of hate, which I was, full of anger which I was, anxiety, all this is, is uh, uh, manufactured into the music. Uh, so, so those people who would argue, well, I listen to this to, to, to deal with my suicidal or depressive uh, inclinations, um, uh, you know, it helps me, here's music that, that, that's speaking to the, these, these feelings and emotions in me, and I need I need this kind of music, and that was my argument. And um, but my 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 new understanding is, uh, yeah, no, you're just, you literally are feeding that that those demons by listening to that music. And we were not only listening to it from other artists; we were creating, we were contributing more to that industry, that musical uh, uh, medium. And um, you know, for for instance, uh, here ah. I, that's. That's me, and what's called corpse pain. I don't know so that, that that is you. That's a is that a, a modified picture of you or slightly modified? But that is the makeup on my face. It's called that's corpse your pain. with makeup. Yes. Wow. And there it is again. That would be me. Oh my! Back, you know, with uh, that was the band name. That is satanic. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I think there was. Me and my lead guitarist at the time. Oh, uh, that's upside down. Yeah, there we go. And I'm wow. on the left, or whatever that is. I'm right here. Yes. Right here. And this guy, he just died two years ago of alcoholism. And I could tell uh. you, the music we put together, there were, there were one drummer died behind the wheel of a, uh, on the way to practice, uh, had a heart attack on the way. Another guy. He shot himself in the back of a graveyard soon after trying out for my band. Um, I shot myself in a graveyard um, years after he did. Uh, uh, another musician that I played with in France, because you could, I never met the guy, but I would send my vocal recordings online through technology, and he, he was, I was a fan of his music, and he turned out later to become a fan of our band, so we, uh, uh, collaborated and um, and we did one album together and uh, a French black metal band and he later maybe two years later hearing that I shot myself he threw himself oh in front of a, a bullet train in France naked with a sheet around him as an artistic expression and he was suicidally depressed all his life and um, and I I saw the news report and everything, and and the, the album was called In the End, and it turned out to be his last album that I sang for. Wow. Uh, and it was, you know, the, the title of the album, uh, not too comfortable to mention the, the, the name of the band because I'm not trying to spread this stuff, but um, was In the End, and that was his last album. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, yeah, and there, there was just so much negativity built around the, the music we created. Um, so uh, so I'm, I'm calling on God 
and uh, I says, God, if I'm meant to live, uh, I'll live through it, you know, but I'm going to give you my hand and I'm going to swing it towards my head. Literally, this is what I did. I, I had the, a 32 caliber gun in my hand. I had only shot it a few times at a shooting range. It was only a year old. And, uh, and, and strangely, it was my certificate to, to, to carry and conceal that the FBI found my uh, handwriting uh, on this concealed permit um, that, that, led, that led them to, my, to me and, and, and who was committing a certain crime. And um, once again, more about that later. And uh, so, so, so I says to God, I'm going to swing the gun towards my head and, um, and I'm going to let you take my hand. I don't, I don't even think God was going to take my hand. I, this is just my prayer to whoever I'm praying to. I don't even know it at this state, state in my mind. And, and I'm, I'm suspecting God's just going to take my hand or not. But I'm going to swing it towards my head. And if I'm meant to survive, he'll grab my hand. This is the, what's going on, how I'm reasoning with it. And he'll, he'll let the gun go off in such a way that I could survive it. Now, if I go blind, if I'm, if I'm uh, mentally... Uh, deformed in some way or another, uh, I'll survive it and I'll live with it. And uh, so you were I, testing I, I, God at this point. I was to testing. if if you're real, basically, it sounds like you're saying if you're real, you'll save me from this uh, That's this right. gunshot. Yeah, and 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 so. So I'm just because I could have certainly just put it to my head and I, I talked to a, a, a veteran not long before that at a party and he's telling me and I, I coaxed some information well out of him and he's he's like well if uh, if you're caught by the enemy our, our sergeants teach you uh, to shoot yourself back here behind the ear because um, it's guaranteed death you know if you don't want to be tortured by the enemy for information or whatever. And, you know, just kill yourself before they take your gun and stuff. And, uh, and do it that way. It's guaranteed. But strangely enough, that's where the gun went off, right behind my ear. And, um, but, which is all the more odd because this is as bad off as I am. And I was a vegetable and it took two years to recover. But, I mean, I'm fully recovered and I'm a better artist. I'm a, I'm a better thinker. I'm a Christian now, so I'm a better man all the way around. And you were, but you were a vegetable for, you said, two years, basically? Yeah. Up to you two had years. no function. Well, I was, I had to redevelop, I had to relearn everything. Yes. And, um, but anyway, so, I'm, so I go ahead, I get, I get up the courage, I'm listening to depressive music while I'm doing it, um, uh, with headphones in my ears, and then I go in, and I swing it towards me, and about halfway, it gets about halfway, and something grabs my arm, and I know this feeling when the spirit world grabs your arm, because I, I've been a goth, I've been a metalhead, and I'm, I, you know, I've been a taphophile, which is somebody who really likes cemeteries and hangs out in cemeteries. Uh, not a necrophile that digs up people and, and defiles graves or nothing, but a taphophile is just somebody who likes to hang around cemeteries. And um, so I was, and that's why I shot myself in a cemetery. And, and one time in a cemetery, I reached into a, a tomb where there was a little vent, and the vent opening was broken away that I could reach in and touch a coffin. And just to be morbid, I've reached in to touch a coffin, and I got shocked by a, a spirit that didn't want my hand in there. So my hand's coming out like this, because of, it's an electrical sensation that doesn't burn, that doesn't leave a burn, but it feels like electric. It's the only way to describe it. And I never felt that feeling again until many years later when I went to shoot myself, and then something grabbed my hand. I felt that electrical sensation again, only halfway through the swing. And then by the time it made it the rest of the way, something actually aimed this gun to my head in a certain way, just like I had asked. And um, so then I, I crossed over. I could, you know, I don't know. I, I could go into that whole experience, but, but I'd like to, I could go back to that because I just want to mention some stuff I never mentioned publicly before that happened just after that when I returned to my body. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and I felt myself enter my body again, and I was a wreck, and, um, and I was slumped over. And, you know, I had 
whiplash, but I didn't break my neck. And, uh, and I was blurry. I had no vision. I could just see light. And uh, uh, what happened? So I reached for my gun. I've never mentioned this before. Uh, I, I'm looking for my gun because I'm, nope, nope. I forgot what, my, what the deal I made with, with God or whoever I was speaking to at the time. I, knew it was, I know it's angels now but, and Jesus. But, um, but I reached for the gun because I was like, this, this feels terrible. I'm, I'm, I'm spitting blood. Uh, I just want to die the rest of the way at this point. I'm just thinking, get this over with. And uh, so I'm reaching, looking for the gun because it fell in the grass somewhere, and I find it, and I recock it, and and uh, and I put it somewhere else to my head, I believe to my temple. I can't quite recall, and um, and I'm going to shoot myself again, and uh, to to finish the job, and the thing was jammed, Randy. It was jammed. It never jammed before. It just fell in the you know, in the grass, and uh, I don't know what could have, but, 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 wow. but, you know, it was just, and I, I couldn't do anything. It wasn't dirty or nothing. I don't know what it was. So then, uh, then I felt compelled. I sat I, I can kind out. of hint at what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. Answer Lord prayer. Lord, yeah. you know. But, um, but then I was, but then I found the strength because I, I parked, uh, you know, maybe, uh, to the other side of this old New England cemetery in New Hampshire. And, um, and I was like, my phone's in the car along with my suicide note. I didn't expect to need my phone on me. I had a flip phone at the time. And um, so I had to drag myself to the car uh, through the graveyard to, to call for somebody for help. Because otherwise, nobody would know I was there. I didn't tell anybody. My wife thought I was on the way to work. I owned a tattoo shop. Uh, and um, instead, I went in the basement, got my gun, and kissed her goodbye in such a way that, you know, I was never going to see her again, kissed my dog goodbye, kissed my stepdaughter goodbye. And they knew something was up, but I didn't let them know because I didn't want them to stop me. And, uh, but, but I did get to my uh, phone in the car, called her. I didn't even know what graveyard I was in or what the name of the town was. I just told her. Look, hon, it was some graveyard when a friend from New Jersey came up to visit us. We took him there during the fall because he was kind of gothic and like that sort of thing, too. So, so she remembered because of this, the one graveyard I took a friend to who was visiting us from New Jersey. So, oh, that's the so-and-so graveyard. I still don't remember where it was. And she sent the ambulance and the police, and they found me back there. I was still kind of coherent, coming in, out of, in and out of conscious, uh, sitting Indian style with the gun next to me. I went back to the gun and um, just couldn't get that. Thing. And uh, then they flew me to Concord Hospital, Concord, New Hampshire, where they kept me only for a few hours. They couldn't save me. I died twice on the way to the hospital. That's another thing. I'm, the, 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 the ambulance report was he died twice. We've resuscitated him two more times. I didn't have two more near-death experiences that I recall. And uh, they had to helicopter me to Boston General Hospital, where I stayed for for like around two months. So, so from the time the gun went off, um, here I am, in, you know, looking in front of me and what do I see? I, I see a graveyard and I'm, I'm on this plane. Then the gun goes off and I don't go from this plane to blank to another plane. I just got sh shifted right out of my body. I felt like the gun pushed my spirit to the side of my body, and later I've had confirmations that the other side is just arm's length of us, you know, dimensionally. Uh, we, we can't reach out and touch it, but that's about how far apart these two dimensions are, and, um, and that's what happened. I, I, I felt myself get pushed so far just that way, and then I felt myself taking off somewhere, um, being not, not purposely going somewhere, being magnetically drawn somewhere, not towards the light. I've never seen a light, but I went into to, to that black realm. And I remember uh, on the other side, after the gun went off, I said, I said in my consciousness, my consciousness said, felt me being pulled somewhere and said, here we go. That was the first three words <laughs> I said as a, as a dead man, you know, or as a spirit, <laughs> you know, here we go. 
and I was just ready for anything. But, you know, uh, being an agnostic, I guess maybe I didn't believe in hell, but I, I certainly, you know, because I now as a living, you know, as someone who survived this, I study a lot of near-death experiences and um, to try and understand where I was. And uh, it turns out there's lots of confirmation of this black place that we end up first. And then either a light shows up as a pin pin point and then opens and then we feel the loving energy from it and we we're drawn to it i never had that which makes me think that and i never was spoken to on the other side i never got a message it's the loneliest near-death experience i've never heard of anything so minimal but um all i all i felt was i was there for some length of time or no time at all uh, but I was content there. Uh, I could have been there forever, and I later confirmed that other people do feel peaceful there as well. And um, and uh, but then I did feel like, oh, I'm moving, I'm moving. No, no. And all I felt is my soul crying out. No, I knew where I was going. I think I felt I was going back the same direction I came. And I was like, no, no. I was yelling out. My soul was just screaming out. No, God, don't send me back there. And um, but sure enough, that's when I ended up back in my body. And that was my entire near-death experience.